very early in the morning. But we were quite exposed, so the fetch was high and the boat's going like this. It's been a bit of a restless night and not much sleep. And the bang was the snubber rope breaking. Time to move on, I think. And the plan is literally just to go down the coast under the second bridge. Yep, there's two bridges and to a little island called Rimau and depending on what the sea state is like we'll decide whether we anchor on the east side or on the north side. After that there is another little island um, further west called Kimau I think it's called and uh, much smaller uh, but we might go to that one later uh, maybe tomorrow because it gets us further out to the 30 meter contour line and this is uh, an important consideration because of all the fishing nets we understand that if you stay on the 30 meter contour line then you're out of the way of the local fishermen and all the obstructions that they bring so that is the rough plan liz is busy weighing anchor and uh, just got to take down the sun cover and we're ready to rock and roll behind me as we uh, leave this little channel uh, we've got Jerajack Island over on the east side but uh, here on the mainland you can see there's a lot of reclamation going on and this is happening all the way up the east side well not all the way up but you know quite a few spots up the east side of Penang Island itself you just wonder how many more buildings they're going to build for residents uh, all along here you can see our uh, resident tower blocks they're building yet more as well so long Penang, it's been a fantastic week. We've really, really enjoyed ourselves. And to be honest with you, we could stay another week really easily. We've met some great people, we've seen some beautiful places, and we've eaten the best curry that we've had since India. See you again, Penang. comes the bridge, get ready to duck. So after all the craziness of Penang, we've headed south, not very far, just under two hours. We've come to the very tip of the island and we've moved out to Pulau Rimo behind me which is a tiny little uninhabited island and we're just going to take it easy for a day. Cheers! Do a big burp. <coughs> that was rubbish. That tapping you can hear behind me uh, is a little trick that the local fishermen use. They bang their oars on the side of their boats and supposedly it attracts the fish. I don't quite understand the logic of that, but uh, we've seen that all over this coastline. So it's a little trick that all the fishermen share. Anyway, we're now at anchor by Rimu, which is the bottom island just off Penang mainland. So we're on the very southern tip of Penang here now. It's pretty flat calm. We chose the island obviously to give us some kind of protection, but uh, there's not really anything to be protected from because it's super flat and uh, quite pleasant and you never know we might even get a lovely sunset straight over that island <laughs> And there's another lovely sunny day in paradise here, just south of Penang. Oh, we've got some weather coming in. We now have a westerly swell coming through. A, well, it's a swell and a squall. So we're spinning around like this. Um, previously, we're on the east side of the island and uh, we've got an easterly squall. So we move around to the north where we were quite safe and wake up this morning to this it's a gusting 20 odd knots 25 and um, it's all okay except of course someone decided to come along yesterday and anchor right next to us 
on a much smaller scope of chain as well. So his turning circle is smaller, ours is much bigger. So we're not really following each other and doing the, uh, the anchor dance that we should be. It's been a bit of a restless night and not much sleep, of course, but um, better to stay here and keep an eye on things. We're thinking of leaving today, but chain slipping. So what happened then this morning? Oh, there was a great big bang and uh, quite a lot of weather coming through. 20, 22 knots, but we were quite exposed. So the fetch is high and the boat's going like this and the bang was the snubber rope breaking. So then we were just on the chain and the chain was being pulled out of the windlass. So we need to look at that. It, the windlass wasn't, wasn't strong enough. So then we had to move really because the other oh, problem was having that boat right next to us. You forgot the second snubber. Oh yeah, so you then, uh, before I got up, you went over and you put the old snubber on with the old, with the old hook on it and uh, it just snapped and phew, went straight away because of the force of the up and down action of the waves. So it was great fun taking the anchor up with the boat doing that and the waves doing that and I got drenched. But well, we got the anchor up, we've come round to the other side of the island, we've just put the anchor down again. I've used a different warp line, a stronger warp line, but we've got less waves, so hopefully we'll be alright. The mini's good, the main thing. So, a couple of lessons learned. Firstly, in that kind of blow and with those kinds of waves, you need to put a much, much longer snubber on than the one I had, which was probably only about three metres. It needs to be ten. Um, so I'll show you what we do next. Right, I'm tying this on with a rolling hitch. I got it from um, an online sailing training session. It may look different to the normal ho uh, rolling hitch, but it's designed to go onto a chain. That will not pull this way now absolutely rigid. I'm now going to put it over the bow roller. Now you can bring it back over the bow roller and bring it back to the cleat but since we had our accident with our extra special piece of bow roller the other, the other week uh, I looked into this a bit more on the internet and I think generally the consensus seems to be bring it back through the fair lead and onto a cleat. Don't put any more strain on the bow roller than you have to. So now I have to take it out and bring it round. So this is a beautiful new three strand warp line lots and lots of elasticity in it uh, it's long it's just a warp line we can use it for a snubber or or for a warp i've set it up now if we get a big blow through and if we start getting those big waves again we can let out the snubber and just make it a bit longer which just helps reduce supposedly <laughs> some of the uh, wear and tear on it see how it goes <laughs> Very early in the morning. It's too early in the morning. Long day today, so early start. Let's have some coffee and then we're out of here. Cat milk. Special delivery. Millie. So we're just leaving. Just over there, 
is a safe water mark. It's actually a kind of channel marker and it indicates the beginning of the channel for the fishing boats and well, all boats to go in. And it's supposed to be flashing once every 10 seconds. We have just spent the last hour looking for this thing. And of course it's not lit. Now we can see it on the radar, fortunately, so that was okay. But you have to wonder what must it be like trying to navigate at night when you're looking for something like that and uh, you don't have uh, radar, what do you do? You kind of have to assume that it is exactly where it is on the chart. Well, in this case it is, but that's not always the case because these things can move, especially in strong currents and tides uh, and, and squalls. As you can see, it's a rather splendid day. In fact, it is really, really hot. There is no wind at all, even though we've still got uh, the main and mizzen out. Absolutely nothing to talk about. I uh, ran the water maker for nine hours. We've just made about 300 litres of water. Uh, Millie's had a very nice sleep. I've had a haircut. And Liz, well, what are you doing, Liz? She's not even there. She's making sandwiches. So here we are. That was 70 odd miles of motor sailing. And towards the end, it was getting rather hot. Anyway. This is the south of Pankor Island, uh, in between this island and a little island over there. But it's this beautiful bay, look at this. I wasn't really expecting anything like this, actually. So a big thank you to all our Patreons and Rum Funders, wonderful people who support us. The love we feel from you knows no bounds and it's uh, a real pleasure to be able to produce these for you. Yeah, thanks guys. And in fact, this is the first episode that we have made with our new camera that was kindly donated by our Patreon and yeah. Rum Funders. Uh, it was a little bit hit and miss this time. We're just getting used to it. It's a very, very complicated camera. There's a lot of things to learn. You're about halfway through understanding it? Yeah, I'm kind of getting to grips with it. So uh, give us a couple of episodes and we'll have it properly licked. Yeah. But on that note, we get asked so many questions about all the gear that we use, don't we? It's one of the most popular questions we get asked is what gear do you use to make your vlogs? I think a lot of people want to do this. A lot of people who are doing this kind of, who are doing what we're doing, want to do vlogs as well. So we thought we would reveal some of our secrets. Yes, so we're going to talk about everything that we use from this camera to the old camera, to your camcorder, to the drone, the to phones. sports cameras, everything. Everything. Audio. So we're going to do a special on that. Yeah. And um, as Liz says, yeah, give away some of our secrets because I don't think it's just vloggers either. I think, you know, more and more mm. people are doing video now. Mm. So uh, yeah, we'll talk in a bit more detail about it. Uh, part of that is editing, you have to remember. Yes. A lot of it is in the editing. So are you going to be able to cover that, do you think? It's a big subject. Yeah. You know, I just wonder if maybe we should be doing two episodes even. I, I think we should because first of all, you need to know about the equipment. You need mm. to know the kind of equipment and what it does and what it can do. And perhaps why we've moved on from where we were to where we are now. But then alongside that comes the, sto the storytelling using editing. Yes, yeah. Okay, and well, maybe, maybe we should do that. Yeah, maybe we'll do that as well. So look out for that. It will be coming soon. But if you have any questions about camera equipment and vlogging and audio, anything like that, then put it in the questions below this clip now. and uh, if we can answer some of those questions on this special then yeah. we'll do our utmost. Thanks so much for watching. Please, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button so you get notifications of every time we upload anything. It's right here. Just hit this one here and over here. This is what we're suggesting you might want to watch next. And this is what YouTube is suggesting that you should watch next. Your choice. Bye.